All right, here we go. Episode 94. Yeah, I'm starting a little different this time. Um, <laughs> ATD Baseball Podcast. Same cast as characters as always, myself and Kyle. Um, you had a pretty good weekend. I'd say I so. Did. Yes, I did. If you um, want to tell everybody what it is, you can. If not, and say, you know what, Melo, it's none of your fucking business. <laughs> I completely get it. I completely understand. No, man. Of course, I've I've been I've been keeping you guys updated on the whole wedding front. Um, I'm gonna take a quick turn here. Uh, closing on a house. Damn right. We're uh, we're closing on a house. Um, pretty exciting news. Um, it is all but a done deal. Um, so everything is taking shape. So my sources can't confirm that too. Just yes. <laughs> It's always sources in this industry, I'm telling yes, you. Yes, I can't confirm. Yes, our our industry takes a lot of uh takes a lot of um trust in sources. So uh yes, we have that. Um but no, um closed on a house. Uh we got our offer accepted. Pretty excited. Um so that will be coming. Uh probably say a good two months away until this whole background is gone. So Give or take, we're gonna have to uh, tackle that when it comes and kind of, you know, have some feelers. But in in the foreseeable future, I will be in a new recording area. So it's exciting news. Um, and uh, Mello, you can also be excited about this when you come out east. Yes, you uh, you got a nice pad to come to. Yes, I've seen pictures. I like it very much. Uh, not that you need my approval, but I approve of it. Um, we always appreciate it. It's looks great i'm happy for you guys you guys deserve it um you should see he's got a big ass mansion out there and, and <laughs> it's crazy i'm like damn yo kyle was telling me he's gonna be doing the podcast in his indoor jacuzzi that he has in there that's crazy <laughs> that's incredible i'm like all right oh I yeah i want to see it yeah oh yeah but um congrats yeah congratulations on the house you guys Thank deserve you, it you guys earned it um yeah so uh, Kyle had a pretty good weekend. Um, I, so. I did too, I guess. Yeah, I mean, watching the Dodgers lose two out of three to a mid Cubs team is not fun, and watching their fans invade Dodger Stadium like it's Wrigley Field, um, that's not fun. And then uh, watching the Braves completely manhandle this team Friday night and Saturday night, not fun. You know, I mentioned this before we started pressing record. We're at the part of the year where I'm just becoming a miserable person again. Summer's over. The leaves are changing. And so is my attitude. I hate everything. Doomsday. Here comes this Dodger postseason run that who knows if it will even last three days. You know, it's doomsday all, all over again. I, I can smell... The gas being lit, I can smell, I can see the train coming down and ready to trample my ass over. So it, it's everything you want to describe, that's how I feel right now. It's doomsday for me. There's this, there's this dark cloud that's hanging over me right now because I can see what's in front of me. I hope I'm wrong, I really do, but... It it's turning into fall, and that means I turn into a horrible person again. Just in time for the holidays, so that's great. Um, doing good. Other than that, I'm doing fine. Um, we got stuff that we want to discuss today. Um, Dodgers Yankees as always, but we got two weeks to go in this regular season. Um, so we're looking. At the potential wild card matches right now, we're not previewing them. We're not giving you any predictions, obviously, because things can change. Um, but just kind of giving our thoughts on each of them, which which is the most intriguing, you know, and all that other stuff. Um, yeah, and that's about it. And then if we have time, we'll do Alex Cora because he's in the news again for uh, um, not so good things. I know this kind of hits home to Kyle, but we'll we'll bit. see. But um, I guess we'll, let, let's just jump right into this. Let, let's do these postseason matchups here. So, as you know, 
postseason expanded uh, a couple years ago. So now we have two sets of wild card. We have four wild card teams in each league. Um, we have so um, you have two. You have your one and your two seeds get a buy. Which in this case, if the season ended today, it would be Yankees and the Guardians. Those would be your one and two. In the National League, it would be Phillies and Dodgers, one and two. Then you got your wild card matchups, and these are very intriguing to me. Um, you got uh, Orioles and Royals, and then you got Astros and Twins, and then in the National League, you have, which I think this is going to be the best one, Padres, Diamondbacks, um, and then you have the Brewers, and there's a tie between the Mets and and the Braves right now. And I don't know who would get the tiebreaker in this situation because the season series is five games apiece between the two teams. They have a big series coming up next week that will determine who gets that final spot, so that will be exciting. But um, which which wild card series or potential wild card series are you interested in the most? Okay, so I'm going to tackle this a few different ways. I first want to point out um, the NL West, right? We talk about it every week because of the Dodgers. There's going to be three teams coming out of the NL West if the postseason ended today. Um, I can't stress enough how much I like that, honestly, because you look at the Dodgers, right? The Dodgers stereotype is that they run the NL West and they're doing their thing at all times. You got these two other teams who are knocking on that door right now. You know, these two teams are showing, you know, right here. There's there's three teams out of the NL West. I think that's such a cool thing. You know, and it's a Diamondbacks and Padres team. The Padres team has a good mix of young and veteran. I like what they have. But this Arizona team excites me, and they excited me last year. Yes, maybe they're underperforming a little bit this year, but I like what they have, and I still think they can make some noise. Um... However, the one that intrigues me the most, um, of course, I might be a little biased because it's the American League. I'm going to have to go with Baltimore and Kansas City. Yep. And we all know what Baltimore is, right? They're the team to beat. Frauds. They were, oh. <laughs> they were the team to beat going into the season. Everybody hyped them up, and now they're battling for the AL East with the Yankees. Um, obviously, these seedings could change. Um but at this very moment, I have to go with Baltimore and KC. Um, before the season started, you and I were both high on KC. Um, I like what they have. I really do. And do not be shocked with the way that Baltimore is playing right now. I would not be shocked if this series goes in KC's favor. Uh, I really wouldn't. Um, however, if I had to be a betting man, I would still pick Baltimore in this position. Um, however, though... I would love to see that wild card matchup. I think that would be so fun for baseball. It gets Kansas City back into the postseason um, as as a true underdog against Baltimore. Uh, so for me personally, I would have to go with Baltimore and KC. Um, obviously, I'm going to be biased here. Number one, I like this series because it's two teams that are chasing my team. Really, not just this year, but they've been chasing my team for the last couple of years now. Um, yeah. And this is probably the main thing that I like about this. One of those two teams is going home in the first week. And I like that. Now, mm -hmm. so, now listen, yeah, well, the Dodgers could be home too in three days. I understand. That. But for right now, um, I'm, I'm only saying that because the Diamondbacks and the Padres have put so much effort into trying to get over this Dodgers team and win the division. And they both have been close. And I'm not saying that they still don't have a chance because they do. Um, that's, if you're looking at it from a Padre or Dodger fan, I mean a Padre or Diamondbacks perspective, it sucks because you're going to have one, if they meet up, you're going to have one team move on and you're going to have a team that put in all this effort just to get to this point. And it's going to end after two games or three games or however long. Um, that's the only unfortunate thing because I think if Arizona 
and San Diego were not matching up against each other, I think they would be favored in either series that they play against. I think they would. I think San Diego would be favored to beat Milwaukee. I think Arizona would be favored to beat Milwaukee again, like last year. Um, and I think both of those teams would be favored against either the Mets or the Braves, whoever gets that final spot. Um, so that's the only thing that sucks. I wish it's great for baseball because hey, you're getting some of the two hottest teams since the All Star break, but it's in a best of three in the wild card round. It's not like this is for the pennant. This is for a division. This is to go to the championship series. That's not what this is. This is, hey, you tried your best to be better than the Dodgers in the division. You weren't. Now, part of the reason why I think Arizona's not in the lead right now is because they had a bad start to 2024. That's probably the reason why they're not in front right now in this division. Um, But obviously for me, bias included, that's the most intriguing because it was it wasn't too long ago too that the Dodgers had the one seat and that four or five is playing the one seat and right now it's Philly um so man whoever wins that series it's that's gonna be if they match up with LA or if they match up with um Philly it's gonna be a great series either way um I do want to ask you this which series would be probably the most expensive to get in out of these four? Um, I do think Houston and Minnesota has a chance to take this. Okay. However, I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking that. But <laughs> I like that. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm yeah, yeah. Um. Just with the sh- just with the sheer talent that's in these in this wild card series, I'm gonna go with San Diego and Arizona. Um, it's an easy especially, trip too. yeah, it's an easy trip for either opposing team. Whether Arizona has to go to San Diego or San Diego has to go to Arizona, their fans will show up. Yeah, I I, I do agree. Um, and hey, it could even be more expensive if you look at it this way. If Do- if LA and Philly flip flop that one seed, yeah, and this is what it's looking like is Padres Arizona, and whoever wins goes and faces uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, that I could see that series even skyrocketing more. Um, yeah. I'm gonna have to go with that one. Um, I think Kansas City kind of dilutes the Baltimore one, uh, and Milwaukee dilutes the other those one. Are, those are three Baltimore home games, no? Yeah. I, yes, it, it would be. Um, yeah, I I definitely think Baltimore's fans would show up. Yeah. Um, not really betting on Kansas City's, but if I had to put money on it right now, I'd probably have to go San Diego and Arizona. I think if the Mets get in too, I think that would be a, a expensive series. I because could see that. you've got this three seeded Milwaukee team that you know obviously they don't want to lose again like they did last year. But then you have this Mets team; their fans will travel and they, they will, will pay the good money to go see their team, especially in a playoff situation where, listen, two months ago it was a pipe dream that the Mets were even going to be in the playoffs. And now you have this, and, you know, right now the Mets are kind of, hey, let's throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. That, that That's what it is right now. So um, I definitely think um, if the Mets were to get into the postseason, I think that would be a hot ticket too. Um Right, do any of these series bore you? Houston and, and Minnesota bores me. Because we've seen that movie a thousand times. Yeah. Um, if I had to say one of them, it would definitely be Houston and, and Minnesota. Um, and depending on who moves on, it could be the next series too. <laughs> um, yeah, no. I, I, I think every series has a storyline except for theirs. I think that's kind of what I'm looking at. Um Houston, it's the same song and dance that it's been over the last seven years. Uh, and Minnesota, it's the same narrative with them, no matter who they face in the first round or however far they get. You know, it's usually they get bounced by either Houston or New York. Um, so for me, it would be that one. I, I feel like there's no storyline. Obviously, with San Diego and Arizona, you have the NL West, 
with Milwaukee and especially if the Mets get in. The Mets are going to be the storyline. Um, and then I think Kansas City going into that series is a storyline. Uh, a young team that, you know, odds were against them at the beginning of the year. Um, so for me, it would be Houston and Minnesota. Which one seed would be more expensive, Philly or New York? Yankees. I'd probably say Philly. If I had to put money on it. I know that kills you. But it does. Yeah. But I, I understand the what's been going on around Philly in the last few years. So I I think they are they would take that and run with it. I really do. Because you know their fans are going to pay it. Not saying the Yankee fans won't. But I just feel like, you know, Philly has that edge a little bit. What's your dream league championship series matchups right now? Or, or let me ask you this, because yeah. I don't that that's too easy. What yeah. do you think MLB's dream Final Four is right now? If you were at, if 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 you're Commissioner Manfred, and you're sitting in your office on um, Park Avenue at the MLB headquarters, and you're looking at the schedule and you're looking at the matchups, what do you think? is Major League Baseball's dream league championship series? Well, I have three out of the four already done. Uh, Philly, Los Angeles, and Houston. I go back and forth on New York and Baltimore. I go back and forth due to, you know the money that the Yankees are going to bring in. There's, you know, if they're looking at it from a financial standpoint, they want New York. If they're looking at it as a viewership, maybe even you know, like a storyline, I think it's Baltimore. Uh, yeah, I think it's Phillies, Dodgers, NLCS. And I think, um, see, I wish Baltimore was, I wish, I wish the Yankees were two and I wish Baltimore was one. I wish yeah. they didn't have to face each other in a division series. I wish that was for the pennant. Because that would agree. be very interesting to me, very intriguing. Um, yeah. I do think there's this alternate world. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think New York, Mets, Phillies, I think that's another dream matchup that could ha that yeah. MLB wants or could mm -hmm. really be cheering for. You have, I mean, by that point, you're going to have this miracle Mets team that beat Milwaukee, or beat Atlanta to get in, beat Milwaukee, upset either the Dodgers or the, or, well, it would have to, it would have to be the Dodgers, yeah. Mm. And then you have Philly waiting for them, this big, bad Philly team, and you have this miracle Mets team f for a chance to go to the World Series. I, I, I think you, that can, I think that would be interesting too. Yeah, I agree. Which, as you can see by the World Series last year, we never get what we want. Um, it's probably what's going to end up happening. You're going to have a Guardians, Royals, ALCS, and then you're going to have a Diamondback, Brewers, or something like that. Brewers something. Brewers Padres. I mean, it, listen, it's hard. I can't say the Padres and the Diamondbacks are not a draw anymore because they are because they have yeah. Machado, they have Tatis, they have Bogarts, Corbin Carroll. They have all this pitching. I understand that. So I can't. They used to be the joke, like, oh, you know, Arizona, who wants to see that? Yeah, a lot of people do now because they got yeah. to the World Series last year. San Diego was not that – was pretty close two years ago, you know. And everybody hates the Dodgers. So, yeah, yeah. everybody wants to see them fail. Um, that, uh, unless you got anything else on the postseason. I'm trying to think of other stuff here. Um I don't have much, but, I mean, maybe a quick comment. Um, I want to see this Yankees team against Houston. This I Yankees wanna, team? Okay. I want to see this Yankees team against Houston. Um, in years previous, I've always felt like the Yankees have always been the underdog. Um, they've always been the team that's lacking that one piece that's needed to overcome Houston. And for me, I like for me to go... Gave me a for me to, for me to go into a potential World Series that the Yankees would be in, 
Um, I wouldn't want to go through a Minnesota or a or a, a Cleveland. I want to go through Houston. That's what I want. So I, my dream ALCS matchup, I want to see Houston against New York. And I want to see what this Yankee team has against that big bad team that they haven't been able to overcome in the last six, seven years. Um, they've gotten close, don't get me wrong. And I'll give them the credit for that. But with Soto and Judge kind of leading this home here, I want to see it. I, I really do. And that's where I will go into a World Series feeling very good if we can over, uh, overcome Houston. And because of the standards, you can finally get those games in your building. You exactly. can finally get games one and two, seven and six in your building. Yeah. Um, that can happen. Yeah. I can easily see Houston beating Minnesota, beating Cleveland. I can see it. I, I can see it. I really can see it. I can see that again. Um, so my... The, the the way that I would want this to shake out is I would want Houston to beat Minnesota, obviously, and then beat Cleveland. I would then want Baltimore to beat Kansas City, and I want the Yankees to beat Baltimore, obviously. And then that's where I want Houston. I want us... I don't want us to kind of have that narrative, oh, oh, you just beat KC. They're a young and upcoming beat, team. You did beat Houston. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I want Baltimore in the first round, and then I want Houston. And then, uh, you know, just because of the NL, I would want either Los Angeles or Philly waiting for us. You have to pick one. If I had to pick one? Which one, would be, which one would be more satisfying to you? I like this. Your dream Yankee fan, your dream World Series, your, your dream path to a world championship. Because okay. I have mine already. Okay, so I'll right away. I want us to beat Baltimore in the ALDS, and then I want us to beat Houston in the ALCS, and then I've been calling for it for years, and we should have had it a couple years ago. I want New York and Los Angeles in the World Series. Okay, okay. Obviously, I want New York to win. I'm a Yankee fan, um, but I think if that's the way the postseason would go, it would make that blow just a little bit softer if it was Los Angeles of who we lost to. Okay. Not saying it's not <laughs> it's gonna affect me, don't get me wrong. But um I've been calling for it for years. It's been way too long since we've seen a Yankees Dodgers World Series. And I want it. So that's that's my dream path to the post uh to the World Series. My dream path is San Diego, Philly You got to do it. Say Baltimore. <sighs> stick with you see, stick with You the, see I'm, I'm I want to say Houston. This is where you can lose oh. me a little bit. Because okay. I don't think this Houston team is as strong as they were a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Even when we lost when we got cheated out of it in 2017. Like like that's how I would feel. Like okay, we beat Houston. It's like yeah, well JV's not at the top of his game anymore. You know, there's some guys that are not there anymore. You know, there's no Correa on that team. Springer's not on that team anymore. You know, there's no Lance McCullers who you couldn't buy a hit off of him in Game 7. Um, I mean, I guess just because I'm right, I would probably would say Baltimore. But again, it's like... Obviously, I wouldn't feel bad about beating Baltimore. But it's yeah. like... There's their young team. Like I mean, obviously you do what you're supposed to do, obviously, but yeah. I have no ill will against Baltimore. Mm -hmm. With San Diego, it would be personal. It wouldn't be personal against Philly. I, I like this Phillies team. They've done nothing to me over the last couple of years. I, I I like them, but San Diego would definitely be personal because I think there's there's, and this goes to their fans too. I don't think they respect us. Like I think. At the end of the day, I think Arizona and their fans, whether they want to admit it or not, like, hey, we respect you guys. Like, you like you beat us in 2017 to get to a World Series. We beat you in 2023 to get to a World Series. San Diego, I just, I, I don't think they respect us. I, I really don't. I can see that. And it would be nice to say, hey, you know, like, don't, like, 
two years ago that was lucky like i guess that's the thing that i want i want 2022 to be a fluke like all right like you got lucky once you know yeah you know, jerks and profar got hot for two games in san diego um jay cronenworth got hot too you got lucky but i think if they would have beat him this time it's like hey we beat you in 2020 you got lucky in 2022 we beat you in 2024 show us some respect i think I that's that. the way i would see it with san diego arizona hey at the end of the day i think there's that little respect that we have for each other i think it's yeah. there i feel it with their fans and i feel it with the players i don't think that san diego side respects us at all i really don't. i do yeah i really don't yeah. and it would be nice to put them in their place so yeah so there you go um hopefully listen uh, one of these outcomes, I mean, listen, there's a very good chance that neither of these outcomes are going to be true. But uh, hopefully we get one of them because it's better for true. everybody here at ATD. Um, so I, I guess we'll just jump in our teams now. So yeah. um, I'll, I'll start off with my team. Tyler Glass now, done for the year. I told you this when we started recording. I'm not surprised. I wasn't surprised at all, you know, just some of the things that they were saying out of, you know, again, this is not the first time that Dave Roberts has been wrong on an injury, which part of me doesn't blame him. But it's like, if he's not good to go, let me know. Don't mm -hmm. give me false hope. That he's going to come back and he's going to, you know, he's throwing again. You know, he's going to be pick up right where he left off. Don't do not do that. And that's I, that's how I felt. So right from the beginning when he got hurt, I never felt good about it. Part of it is because of his long-term injuries and this has always been a thing with him. Um, and the other part was they try to downplay it. They just said, "Oh, well, he's being overused. We're gonna give him some, give him some rest. You know, we'll we'll give him a a day off in the rotation. He'll be back next week. Next week never came, never did. And then it was like, oh, well, he's not picking up a ball now. You know, we it's not as heel as we thought it would. It's like, what happened to? He's just gonna miss a turn to the rotation. What happened to that? So I, I'm I, I hate to be blunt, but I feel like I've been dicked around here by my own team." And the medical staff here a little bit. So I'm not surprised that he's not going to be in this postseason run. It's unfortunate because that was part of the reason why you traded for him and gave him a five-year extension was so he could be your front-of-the-line ace and you would never have starting pitching problems again in the postseason. It's not going to be there. So like I said, this all goes back to the whole doomsday thing. Right now you're starting rotation in a playoff series – Jack Flaherty has now gone from the middle of the rotation to now he's probably your game one starter. Probably is now. Yamamoto, who's going right now against Atlanta. And then you got a bunch of question marks. Do you go with a bullpen? Do you throw Walker Buehler out there, which looked, who looked very good yesterday in Atlanta? Only gave up two runs in six inning, which was nice because it was doomsday for 48 hours and then Walker Buehler took the mound. Hey, it's not all bad. It's not perfect, but it's not all bad. And then you got Bobby Miller. Hasn't been good all year. He's statistically the worst pitcher in the Nash in the National League this year. Statistically. Landon Knack, who's been a good young piece that has performed very well. He got shelled the other night in Atlanta. Didn't look good. Um, so it, it's a bunch of question marks. And I, I can't trust this bullpen right now. Because they've been overused a lot. So, um, I'm not surprised by the glass now injury. But, ah, man, it just, I wish he would have been there. Because it would have made a lot of things. I think Dodger fans would be able to be more comfortable. Like, okay. Like, okay, at least he's going to be there. I'm going to say this right now. And I'm going to stand by it. Do not drag Clayton Kershaw for a playoff game on one foot. I beg, please, I, I, I'm not kidding. Do, let's not do that, okay? 
I'm tired of all the postseason disappointments. And this is when he was healthy, you know, in his prime. Last year, you know, not in his prime, obviously. But um, let's not do that again. We, we've seen it. We've seen how this goes. Do not drag Clayton Kershaw on one foot. Because let me tell you something, it's not going to be a good outcome. And we might as well just go home now. I'm sorry, I hate to be like that. He's my all-time favorite player. He's a for sure Hall of Famer, first ballot, the whole shebang. You don't want to see that. You don't. That's like watching your dad try to go out there and do something. You know, it's like, dude, you don't have it anymore. I'm sorry. Like, I appreciate the fact that he wants to be healthy and he wants to be out there. But we cannot do that. We cannot. I'd rather have a Walker Bueller who's trying to figure it out and who at least is going to throw 97, 98, or 96 than a Kershaw that's going to be throwing a 90 to 89 fastball, teeing it up for guys like Tatis, you know, Corvette Carroll. I don't want to see that. I, I, you're just asking for a disaster there. I, I really mean that. I'd rather see Tony Gonsolin, who's been gone for a year and a half. He's been making a couple AAA starts. Bring him up. I'm not asking him to give me seven innings. I'm not asking Clayton Kershaw to give me seven innings either. But it's, it's gotten so bad, I couldn't even get three outs from him last year against Arizona. Couldn't even get out of one inning. And now I'm supposed to rely on him on one good foot to go out there and try to pitch and win us a game? I don't think so. Let's not do that again. Um, overwhelming, disappointing week, I'd say, for the Dodgers. Um, and then this is it, and then you can go. Um, they lost two out of three to Chicago the Cubs. After I opened my big mouth saying that this division was over, you know, let's... I didn't say that. I did say this division was over. But I was like, okay, let's kind of start getting ready for the postseason a little bit. But now, because you had you lost two out of three games and you looked terrible in the last in the last one, or the second to last one, and then you look completely outmatched by this Braves team that is scratching and clawing just to get in also. Now, maybe they need the games more than we do, I understand. But... You mean to tell me that you couldn't get, you couldn't score, not off of Chris Sale, because he's having an unbelievable year, but you mean to tell me that you got shut down by number one Kyle Hendricks on Tuesday, or Monday, and you got shut down, I'm forgetting who pitched the other night, um, I'm trying to think here, not Sale. Dude with the long last name, I forget. But one of the rookies. Um, the point is, this is the thing that scares me. They cannot hit good pitching. That's the one thing that scares me. When you get a Chris Sale, it was hard to get runs off of Charlie Morton yesterday. They had a, Otani had to hit two doubles just for them to tie the game. Nobody else was doing anything else. So... Like I said, it's very doom and gloom right now. With all that being said, the magic number is 10. And they are two games um, up on the Brewers for the second bye. Which now that's back in play. But I'm my emotions are just all over the place right now. Just Can we just win games and calm everybody down for a second? That's all I'm asking. Can you beat the Braves today? You know. And can we even this series? Can we? So, we'll see. But very doom and gloom right now. That's all I have on the Dodgers. Yeah. Um, I don't have too much in the Yankees. Uh, I will say they've given me a better feeling in the last week or so. Congratulations on your AL East title. <laughs> Wouldn't put it there quite yet because, trust me, I I know this team. Um Judge is magnificent. That doesn't stop. I say that every week. Um, you know, the, the rest of this lineup is, is hitting, and it's nice to see. Um, pitching staff's coming around. They currently hold a three-game lead on uh, 
on Baltimore. Um, and it did help. They just took three out of four from Boston. Um, those are things that you need. Uh, these It goes back to the whole thing that I kept saying over and over again. Beat the teams that you can and go from there. Uh, if you do that, you should have no problem winning this division. Um, and I feel a whole lot more comfortable at 87 and 63 with a three-game lead. Um, it's, it's definitely something that um, excites me. And now we're traveling out west uh, to play Seattle for three games. Uh, and then we play Oakland. Um, when the game start at midnight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, play Baltimore, and then we round out the season uh, in Pittsburgh. Or, I'm sorry, at home against Pittsburgh. Um, so, theoretically, you got nine out of the 12 games here that you should be winning these series. Um, and then just try your best not to get swept by Baltimore. Um, other than that, though, um, I like where this team sits. Um, my only... My only concern, and it's kind of been a concern the last few weeks, is this bullpen. I don't like where it's at. I really don't. Um, we don't have a closer anymore. We're kind of just going with whoever's out there. And uh, if if I had to pick somebody to throw into that position once the postseason gets here, it's going to be Luke Weaver. Um, maybe some of you have never even heard of Luke Weaver. <laughs> uh, he's He's been a dog for us. He's been a guy who uh, come out of this bullpen, and uh, he gets fired up. He's, he's got that fire with him. Um, the way I look at it is as long as Clay Holmes isn't in that position. Now, I'm not saying not to have him pitch at all. Um, give him those setup innings, you know. Um, and then obviously once the postseason gets here, it's kind of a, you know, if it's a do or die situation, you know, last year we saw, or I'm sorry, two years ago we saw Garrett Cole warming up in the bullpen. Those are the type of things that you might just have to see. Um, might just have to happen depending on, if you get to the ALCS, even the ALDS, that's when Cole was warming up against the Guardians. Um, I think it, uh, I believe it was game five. You know, you saw Cole up there in the ninth inning. Um, you never know. You know, these Luis are things Gil, that... get your ass in the bullpen, my friend. Hey, uh, we, we started using Nestor out of the bullpen a little bit. Um, I liked what I saw. Um, I'm not going to lie, especially now that Clark Schmidt's back. Uh, this rotation, I'm I'm okay with the rotation where it's at. Uh, you got Cole at the top of the st uh, top of the line there, as Let's always. Be nice. uh, <laughs> you got Rodon, uh, Stroman. He's been looking good again. Um, and then Schmidt and Luis Gill to round it out the rotation. Um, I like it. You know, Rodon and Cole. Um, they got to step it up just a tad bit for me. Um, I have no worries about Garrett Cole. He's Garrett Cole. He's gonna figure it out either way. Rodon worries me a little bit, but he's been looking good. Um, I already gave my thoughts on Stroman. Um, Luis Gill, he's been he's been pretty good and pretty solid all year long. Um, and then you got, you know, a combination of either Cortez or Schmidt kind of rounding out that five spot. Um, real quick before we get out of here, I want to give props to uh, Austin Wells. Um, that kid has been lighting it up. Um, he's in the conversation for Rookie of the Year this year. It's such a beautiful sight to see. Um, it gives me those flashes of Gary Sanchez all over again. Um, okay. You got a catcher there. Um, you know that that's that's what his main concern was coming up to the bigs was his catching ability. Um, but he shut all those question marks down. His hitting's always been there, and uh, he's starting to get that power from the left side. And uh, it's it's a beautiful thing to see. Um, so, like I said, uh, as of now, I'm okay with the Yankees. I just need them to keep winning ball games. Um, you, you, you want that first round by. You want that one seed or two seed. Um, just keep winning. Keep doing what you can. Um, I know their magic number was out not too long ago, but I forget what it was. Um, but I will say this bullpen does worry me. Um, that's where I feel my uh, my my strongest emotions are coming from is that bullpen. Um, but, you know, we'll see what Aaron Boone does and see what this team does. Um, you know, you never know. We we could have uh, we could have some other guys coming up from AAA or so forth and so on. But, um, yeah, we'll see where it goes. And as of now, I'm content with where the Yankees are. We'll each give our answer to this question, and we'll get out of here. How mm -hmm. confident are you, are you going into October for your team on a scale of 1 to 10? 
I'm going to give it a... I'm always hard on the Yankees, so this question's hard for me. Uh, but I'm going to go with a 7.5. Um, I like the rotation. It's not great, but it's not bad. Um, the lineup is what it's really carrying that answer for me. Uh, I like this lineup. I like what they have. Um, but also then you also get to the bullpen, and that's where it concerns me a lot. That drops a that drops a point and a half for me alone. So I'm gonna go with a seven and a half. Uh, I feel like it's solid for where the Yankees are right now, and uh, you know there's still no guarantee that we win this division. So um, I'm gonna go with seven and a half. But if you ask me again in about two weeks, I might have a different answer. It really depends on how they play these uh, last uh, four series out of the regular season. I'm out of. Five. I'm interested. Oh, okay. I was interested to see where you were. I'm out of five. The lack of okay. starting pitching really concerns me. And like I saw the last first two games in Atlanta, Mookie Betts and Shohei Tani could completely go hitless again. And that's your series right there. There is a... I, I don't want to say there's an alternate world because I've seen it. I've seen Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman go hitless in a postseason series. Um... You know, and if and if the top of the guys are not going to do it, why should I believe anybody else is going to do it? Has to start with them. The lack of starting pitching, and the lack of offense really concerns me. So I'm at a five right now. Like I said, it can change in two weeks. I mean, listen, you have to take care of business. You have to beat up on the Marlins the next three nights. You have, and then you got Rockies for six. You have three. Um, you have them for three in um, L.A. out here, and then you, the final three games of the year over there in Colorado. Now that's tricky because Coors and, you know, anytime the Rockies see the Dodgers, they're like, oh, I think we'll, we'll play today. I think we'll play a little bit harder today. And then you have um, San Diego mixed in between there. But there, there, you should, out of the 12 games that I just mentioned, there's no reason why you can't go 10-2, and 9-3, and three. And that should be good enough to win this division and get a bye in the National League. But we'll see. Um, that's going to do it for episode 94. We're five away from 100 starting we are. on Monday, obviously. I'm not an idiot. I know how to count. Um, we'll see if the moods change. Uh, we'll see you. He's safe, right? Okay, thank you. Um, we will see you next week. Adios.